Hey all, Heretic here, and today we're gonna to be talking about anomalies. We're gonna go over some quick hits on how you can do successful little things while you're doing each anomaly. We're not gonna spend a ton of time on each of them, we're just gonna do quick hits. So let's jump right in and start with the Prudence of Amethyst. This is the one where your unspent gold will carry over to your next turn, and if you save five, you gain one extra. And one simple thing you can do to get some benefit from this is instead of at the end of a turn where you're gonna tier, save that gold, don't do anything. Just wait till next turn. The next turn, that tier is gonna be one cheaper. You're gonna get one extra gold and all that gold, cause it carries over, will be there. So you'll get extra value and that will add up over the duration of the game if you keep doing it that way. Just make sure you have enough gold, save it, end of turn, good to go next turn. Anti-gravity stadium. This is gonna be the one where the mediums have their health in attack swapped in the shop just be aware there's nothing fancy you have to do for this one just really don't buy minions that you're used to buying when you see their name and picture look at their stats and think oh wait is this a completely different animal right now but as always health is important so if you could see minions suddenly that have a ton of health that don't normally consider these as some options for yourself the might of Kazgoroth and the fortitude of Kazgoroth are going to be lumped together because the idea is very similar your left and right most minion will either be gaining the health of the highest one or the attack of the highest one, depending which of these you have active. You're gonna be favoring the usual type of cards in these scenarios like Divine Shield, Cleave, lobbies where Spellcraft and Blood Gems in so you can make one giant monster so you can copy its stats multiple times are gonna be the primary ways you can get value out of this particular anomaly. Money match is where you're gonna start at 10 gold. Every turn you're going to have 10 gold. So what I advise you to do is to tier quickly, tier aggressively until you hit about four and then maybe slow it down. That way you could actually get a little bit of a board and then jump to five. But find your win conditions like you always do. Just remember in the early game, you're not really gonna take much damage. And you know, after you get like four or five turns in, the minions will actually matter if you've got high tier. If they've all got tier one and you've got all tier four, it's not much of a fight. Denathrius's Anima Reserves and Nguyen's Shifting Discs, I'm gonna to lump together because these are both the same ideas. They have events from previous versions of the game in the form of quests. Master Win is gonna give you random hero powers. Those, you basically just have to be aware of all the different mechanics. Now, if you don't know them, I am gonna include links to my guide in the video description itself. So I have made guides. I am gonna update those guides to represent more updated information, but virtually, they're at completely accurate when it comes to which hero powers are available. So take a look at the description for the links you need. Uncompensated upset. So this is where you're gonna start at one gold. Minions cost one gold, but sell for zero and upgrading the tavern costs two less. This is gonna be a complete mind blower for most people because it's completely different from how we played the game the entire time. So you definitely want to pay close attention when you're in this game and not have your normal habits because every game you've played before, selling minions gives you gold doesn't apply here. So gold production rules, things like pirates that are gonna give you gold are going to give you tons of extra value. Anything that you sell is worth nothing. So keep selling and refreshing to a minimum because your economy from both those things doesn't exist. So anything that gives you gold coins are gonna help you win these lobbies dramatically faster. Secrets of Norganid tier seven exists. Simple thing we can do here is just play this as a normal game, but remember that you do have 10 extra armor. So you can take some chances you might normally not take because you've got this extra health. So utilize this so you can tier here or there where you normally want it. But at the same time, don't go too crazy because you're not gonna get that value till tier seven. And if someone gets a win condition early, and just runs out of control, it's not gonna matter if the turn you find that tier seven min that's beautiful as you get killed by a Nomi with, you know, 200, 200 cracklings. So keep it within reason. Transient Treasures is at the start of your turn, choose from two new quest rewards. This is a simple one. It takes you back to the quest meta. If you're not familiar with quests, I will post a link in my video to some things I've done about quests. I'm gonna do an updated list that will be applicable more towards this, just condensed but for now, you would just have the old information to use until I can make the new one. Bring in the buddies. There are buddies in the tavern. The buddies will be in the tavern on their correct tavern tier. Now, we don't know which ones are gonna be available. Are they all in the pool? Because there's 90 something of them, so that's a lot. 
Are they only gonna put the ones that apply to the heroes that are in the game? This is a fact I haven't seen answered yet, which I would like to see because I'm asking this question all the time. I wanna know if they're all in the pool, this is gonna be a very bloated pool full of buddies above everything else. So I advise if you do not know it, to take a look at ETC, I'm gonna to link to my guide in here. I'm gonna update that guide to have everything on that you might possibly need. It's still active for the, accurate for the most part, but there's a couple things I'd like to tweak about it to make it more relevant to the, cur the current situation we're in. So once again, in the description, you'll find a link for it. Oops All. So Oops All is fun, it's great, unless you don't like the tribe that you're Oops all in. But all that aside, the things that work best in this kind of lobby are gonna be heroes that steal. Because yes, if it's beast and everyone's trying to find banana slammers, if you're playing tasks or you're playing scabs, you're more likely to steal all those working components that you need from the other people in the lobby who do find them. So those heroes, definitely the best. And then try to find the counter to whatever that tribe is. Because hey, if everyone's playing undead, Sindori straight shot is sure nice to have because literally everybody in the lobby, including you, with the exception of somebody who said, you know what, I'm gonna make a neutral board. They're all going into that one tribe. So keep that in mind. A fair reward. Instead of a minion, triple rewards discover a tier one Dark Moon prize. This upgrades every three turns, just like Dark Moon prizes did. Now, do you know Dark Moon prizes? No? You and most people don't remember them anymore or it's been a long time since we had to deal with it. Uh, I will link my Tinkitus guide in the description also, but I need to update that one. It's still accurate for the Dark Moon prize tickets because they haven't changed at all, but I definitely just want it to look cleaner. So that will be updated, but it's still accurate if you need it. Finicky Hourglass is gonna be start at Tavern Tier 2. Quick tip with that, basically play a normal game, but if your hero's like Millhouse, hey, it's one less turn you have to tier. There are certain heroes that will benefit from this, but otherwise it's a normal game of Battleground. Oh, and yes, even though you're starting at tier two, you start at three gold. Packed stands. The tavern always has seven minions. So what this means is it's easier to find the minions you want, which means it's easier to force builds you want. Normally, I am not a fan of trying to force a build, but in this scenario where you always have a full shop of minions, you're more likely to find minions you need just be that benefit of them always being full. So if you want a particular build, you might be able to lean into it a little harder than you normally would. Double header, the first minion you buy, each turn you get an extra copy of it. So what this means is pairs are always triples. Just make sure the first card you buy each turn is one of that pair. Echoes of Argus, your battle cries and death rattles are gonna trigger an extra time. Once again, heroes like Tess and Scabs are gonna shine in these lobbies because people are gonna find the key components that you want, and then you can borrow them from them. Now, these lobbies will have definite trends. If the one death rattle build is super powerful, everyone's gonna go to that. There's this one battle cry build, everyone's gonna go to that. So think about what those successful builds would be in this lobby and try to keep in mind, you might want certain counters just to deal with them so you have a better chance of winning. False idols. You only need two copies of a minion to make it golden instead of a triple get a coin. So what you need to think about here is going for a win condition early is very important because you only need two to get a golden copy of it. So you're gonna get that effect much quicker from them. And because triples don't do much, you don't wanna buy cards that don't do anything. Tripling a random minion that gives maybe a couple stats is good for those stats, but you're also not gonna get a minion of a higher tier, so don't waste your time buying cards that don't give you a meaningful gold reward. Rapnel of the Titans, the first minion you buy each turn is free. Basically play a normal game with this, but just remember sometimes if you say it's seven to tier and you have eight gold, maybe considering just tiering, rolling once and then taking one of those higher tier minions. You could definitely do things like that at multiple times in the game if you're healthy already and you're already feeling relatively strong, why not get that tier, possibly get a minion from that higher tier and feel a hell of a lot better about your game. The Golden Arena. All minions are golden, but you do not get triple rewards. So what you need to remember here is that early win conditions are going to be best and easiest to make work because they're gold the moment you find them. So while someone's trying to get to tier five and tier six to find those really crazy ones, you don't care. You're just sitting there throwing out good value already. Just only buy minions that actually matter 
because if they're already golden and there's no big effect from tripling them because you don't get one, don't buy excess of minions you don't need. Just buy the most effective ones you can and get a win condition and mesh that together. And these are all my takes on this stuff. This is all early access. We don't know too much about it. It's all theory, but let's see how it plays out. Maybe some of these things are perfectly right. I feel like with my experience, most of the things I'm saying are gonna be pretty accurate and a good standard for you if you wanna make sure you can start the season going in the right direction. If you want some early access to this stuff, definitely consider looking at the, the Discord channel. I put all this information in there. I put a lot of the reference sheets in there and I will put some things in the Discord that I simply do not put on YouTube because it's not worth an entire video for that you still might find useful. Thanks for watching. I hope you had a good time. I'll catch you in the battlegrounds later.